all you amazing people. Welcome back to Blockbuster Backrooms, a weekly walkthrough of horror. Tonight's movie is Knock Knock, a 2015 film directed by Eli Roth, who also co-wrote the script with Gomero Omedo. I'm terribly sorry, I am confident I pronounced your name wrong. And it was also uh, co-written with Nicholas Lopez. Turns out, this is a remake of the 1977 film Death Game. So, you know what movie I'm going to have my eye out for. (laughs) Some of the original directors and actors from Death Game also had a hand in Knock Knock. I definitely want to do a comparison at some point, now that I know Knock Knock is a remake. So, how is Knock Knock? Oh boy, it's a mess. <laughs> Eli, my boy, I normally enjoy your stuff. You were my childhood spook man, giving me things like Hostel and the Cabin Fever remake. But jeez, what happened here? It's one of the only films that's been turned off in my house. Albeit at the time my boyfriend was there watching it with me and he won't sit through a movie he isn't enjoying. Just before we get into it all, I'm gonna give my normal spoiler warning. This is a walkthrough and judgement of the film after all. And while I don't normally do this, I'd like to give a trigger warning for listeners as there's a fair amount of talk around rape and pedophilia. No pedo shit happens in the film, but it's a very commonly discussed subject, and I know that that alone can be a huge turn-off for people. With that said, let's unpack it all, shall we? We start the movie off with Evan, played by our main man Keanu Reeves, and his wife making out in bed. We find out that Evan's just had a surgery on his shoulder, And before anything spicy can happen, their kids walk in. It's Father's Day, and they've got cake and presents. Evan opens it, and it's an alarm clock with the face decorated by his kids. The acting feels a little strange here, not gonna lie. I'm not entirely sure on what it is. If it's the child actors not being great, or if it's how the adults are speaking to them. I know you speak to kids differently, but still, it feels... odd. I gotta say though, the cake looks damn good. (laughs) Evan pretends to be a monster and chases the kids out of the room. He wants to finish what they started with his wife, but she says no, because the kids are up now. Our man's kind of bummed, saying that it's been three weeks. His wife gets annoyed, exclaiming that she can't keep everyone happy between the kids and her exhibition work. Evan apologises, explaining that he didn't want to start a fight, and his wife says that they can finish when they get back. We see everyone having brekkie. We meet Monkey, the super cute, super sweet puppy, and Lewis, who's helping the mum with her exhibition work. We learn vaguely about Evan's hurt shoulder. He was trying to impress some girls. He says he was just trying to help them, and his wife's just like, yeah, those poor helpless 25-year-olds. I honestly don't know what Evan could have done to hurt his shoulder so bad while helping peeps and making the mum feel like he's flirting. Part of me likes to imagine he was acting like a primary school kid trying to impress the other kids. You know, when you try and carry as many chairs as you can to impress everyone with how strong you are. That's my go-to scenario for his injury. (laughs) We get a pretty wholesome scene of Evan with his kids, which I like, and it genuinely made me laugh. We also get to see the mum's big art piece. Lewis is going to come back later to pick it up. The mum says how it's still kind of wet, and it low-key stresses me out. 
you're telling me it's not fully dry, but you've covered it in a bunch of bubble wrap and a sheet. Girl, you got some balls. I'd never put any covering near any of my paintings unless I knew for sure they were dry. I know it's a setup for later, but still, <laughs> there are better ways of getting Lewis to come back to the house than saying it's still wet. Have Lewis say that they'll have the moving truck for it tomorrow, or that the gallery's just finishing setting up the area for it today, so he'll be back at a later point to pick it up. Why you gotta stress me out by telling me it's wet, man? Lewis has asthma, by the way. Why is that important? Again, set up for a later scene. It's shown fairly well, though. Never pointed out. Just while he's talking, he takes a puff on his inhaler. Lewis also makes a joke about he and Evan are gonna have a super secret party while the family's away for the weekend. Gotta say, y'all... I like Lewis. He's cool and easily the best character. The family heads off for the weekend while Evan stays home with Monkey to do some work. That night, Evan jams out to some music while he works on a 3D model of the house he's designing. He stops to talk to his wife on a video call before turning his music back on and going to smoke some weed. Before he can take a hit, there's a knock at the door. He's greeted by two white chicks shivering in the rain. They ask if he knows where the, Gre where the Gregories live, and he's like, nah, sorry. <laughs> there's a moment of awkwardness before he offers to let them use his phone, since theirs got wet and won't work. They're like, nah, all our contacts are on our phones. They then ask if they could use his computer, because they could Facebook message peeps. It's a kind of weird request of a stranger, and Evan pauses for a moment before saying okay. He lets them in, grabs his iPad and some towels, goes back and finds them gone. They've moved into his lounge, saying it was warmer than at the door. He passes them the stuff and we learn that the blonde chick is called Belle and the dark-haired chick is called Genesis. Genesis says that the taxi driver must have heard the street name wrong because they're far from where they need to be. So Evan offers to get them an Uber, saying that they won't find another cab out here. He finds a driver, but the dude's about 45 minutes away. The girls start whispering and then ask if they can put their clothes in his dryer so they won't turn up to the party soaking wet. Evan pauses again and is like, ah... Uh, yeah, I guess I have some spare robes. He takes their wet clothes and then comes back to the girls cuddling monkey and playing music on his turntable. They talk about his record collection and he admits that he used to be a DJ. The girls start to get a little touchy-feely and Evan moves away from him as they start to talk about sex. The conversation soon moves to his wife and he says how all the sculptures and art in and around the house are hers. Evan's proud of his wife and starts telling them about her upcoming exhibition. The girls manage to pull the conversation back towards sex again. Evan admits that he's not used to chicks being so open about the subject. The girls laugh and start to touch and lean on him once more, so Evan moves seats. His discomfort with them touching him is pretty obvious as he's moved seats every time they've started. And this time, he even pulls his phone out and lets them know that the Uber's 20 minutes away. Once again, the girls bring the conversation back to sex and share their views on it. Both think monogamy is stupid. Belle brings up a kind of warped viewpoint as well saying she's getting used to threesomes now because she knows it's the only way to stop her man from cheating on her in the future. I'm not even going to touch on that at this point. Evan had the same reaction I would have, which is an awkward laugh, followed by a very how do I react to this situation type wow. 
He quickly tries to change the subject, asking what they do for a living. They say they're flight attendants and use it as an excuse to get all up in his grill again. Evan moves once more and continues to ask about their jobs. The girls bring the conversation back to sex again. <laughs> they both stare at Evan and he laughs quietly and awkwardly as he checks his phone. The Uber's five minutes away. Genesis goes to the bathroom as Evan starts to put his records away. Belle spies a vinyl and asks him to play it. He puts it on and, not gonna lie, the song kind of vibes. Belle starts dancing and Evan throws another record on so he can start DJing. Belle says how cool it is and Evan talks about what he does quite lovingly. She gets up real close to him. There's tension forming, but before anything can happen, Evan gets a notification that the Uber's outside. Belle goes off to get Genesis while Evan goes to get their clothes out of the dryer. Evan's just like, what the fuck, as he gets their stuff. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I feel ya. He knocks on the door to the bathroom, and when they don't answer, he announces that he's coming in and that his eyes are going to be covered. The room's steamy, and when he does look up from behind his hand, he finds both girls naked as they ask him to join them. He's like, what the hell, and begs them to put their clothes on and fuck off. They start groping and kissing him as he continues to ask them to stop and leave. Oh man, this seems kinda hard to talk about. Not because of what's happening, I've seen far worse in horror and can talk about it quite freely. This movie is some pretty low level shit as far as I'm concerned. It's picking it all apart that's making the dusty cogs of my brain whirl. Since we're about to fall into a grey area. You see, the shit definitely starts off as right. Well, at least, kinda. Because in the next scene, Evan's taking the lead, pushing them against walls and doing stuff to them. We're not using the, but they enjoyed it so it isn't rape, excuse. That's disgusting. No, he actually starts getting spicy with them willfully after a bit. So somewhere along the line, it became consensual. The start of it is, bare minimum, sexual harassment. And it's gross. But Evan's gross too for ending up going along with it. By the Look, by this point, we all know my views on cheaters. Although I am giving him a bit of leeway because of how it all started. And he did try and stop it at the start, wanting, him just, wanting the girls just to leave. I still think he's a bit of a trashy person for not trying harder because he does give in to it quite quickly. The Uber leaves and the three move to the bed. Evan, babe, I'm sorry, but you suck. You're lucky the chicks piss me off way more than anything else in this movie. They knew you were happily married with kids, ignored your, your discomfort and the fact you said no, and then there's everything else they're about to do. That morning, Evan finds him in his kitchen. Oh man, it's so gross. <laughs> They've made a massive mess everywhere. Genesis is making pancakes. Monkey is on the table eating cereal out of his dog bowl, which is in front of Belle because she was originally eating out of it. And she's also holding a lollipop that has some other food stuck to it. Oh man, it's so gross. Evan's annoyed as hell. He picks up Monkey and offers to take them home. He just wants them out. They're real assholes to him. Evan gets a call from his wife and takes it outside. The two girls are being dicks at the window, but Evan keeps them out of camera shot. His wife asks if he's okay, and he says that if he can get his work done fast enough, he can drive up. She tells him not to stress about it and that she understands. And 
that we'll see each other soon. Our man's pissed as he tells the girls to get dressed. He waits a bit and then asks Genesis where Belle is. Evan looks for Belle and finds her in his closet wearing one of his shirts. He pulls her out and she's begging for him to hug her and tell her he loves her. Evan just picks her up and throws her into the room with Genesis to get dressed for real. He goes out for a smoke while he waits, only to come back and find them vandalising his wife's sculpture, drawing dicks all over it. Having had enough, he calls the police, but quickly hangs up as the girls are like, no, we're 15, we're underage. Evan calls bullshit and they say it doesn't matter because a jury will believe them. He asks how they could be flight attendants and they laugh at him, saying that they saw it in a movie. Before you say anything, no, they're not underage. They reveal at the end of the movie that they're in their 20s. Oh my lord though, these types of threats piss me off so much. Any false rape accusations make me so mad. Not only do you ruin someone's life, if found to be fake, you make it harder for actual victims to be believed. Don't lie about your age when it comes to this stuff either. Claiming to be younger for blackmail is gross. And a PSA to any younger listeners? Don't pretend to be older to get with someone. If you're underage, just wait. You can ruin a person's life, and it's awful. Not to mention, if it's obvious you're lying, the discomfort for the older person is immense. Don't do it. And I swear to God, I better not have to tell you damn ass adults to, go, to not go near kids with this shit. Okay, I <laughs> ran over, sorry. Let's continue on. Evan asks them what they want from him and offers them money. They get pissed and say that they're not hookers who can be bought. The doorbell rings and Evan tells the girls not to move. The visitor is Vivian, a lady that's been helping Evan with his shoulder. He tries to get her to leave. I don't know why he didn't ask for help. Well, okay, I can kinda understand why, but still. As we're talking, Genesis comes out and is uber rude to Vivian, while being all touchy-feely with Evan. Evan just stands there as Vivian gets upset and leaves. He should have jumped away and been like, "You, what the fuck are you doing? I told you to stop touching me. If you don't stop, you can leave and I won't help you. Well, <laughs> that's kind of long-winded, but you get the idea. I see Vivian as a bit of a lifeline, a chance for help. If Evan had have played his cards better, then he may have been able to avoid a bunch of the shit about to happen. Inside, the girls are fucking around on his turntable. He pushes Belle back, unplugs it, and starts chasing the girls around the room, while Genesis yells about what people would think if they knew what he'd done. Honestly, at this point, I would have punched a bitch. <laughs> or hit them with one of the chairs they pushed in front of me. To be honest, for the rest of the film, I was trying to think of a way Evan could hurt these girls without it leaving a lasting mark for them to show anyone. Our man does end up choking Genesis though, and I was honestly cheering him on. Belle, ex Belle actually looks worried too. What did you think was going to happen, you idiot? Evan doesn't choke her for long, and Genesis gasps for air, saying she knew he couldn't do it. He picks up a landline and calls the cops again. Genesis makes it hang up and asks for a ride. Evan drops them off outside a house and leaves. He goes home and cleans up the mess they made even managing to get the sharpie off of the sculpture. That night, when he's doing work, he hears a noise. He finds one of his family photos smashed on the ground. He bends down to pick it up 
and Genesis knocks him out with one of his wife's sculptures. Eben wakes up tied to his bed while Genesis plays with his wife's makeup. He manages to get his phone out of his pocket and hides it underneath him as Belle walks in wearing his daughter's school uniform and panties. She calls Evan daddy as she climbs on top of him. He tries to talk Belle into untying him by playing into her fantasy a little bit. She seems to think about it, but Genesis tells her to ignore him. Belle starts to go off on a tangent, and it seems she's talking about her past, which kind of explains why she's messed up to a point of doing all this, as well as it explaining her daddy kink too. It sounds like she was an actual victim as a kid, I think out of the two girls, she's definitely the most likable. She's not as much as a hypocrite as Genesis. She's more reasonable, and looking at her face doesn't annoy me. <laughs> Anywho, Belle gets upset, still imagining Evan as her dad, or perhaps stepdad, and she starts hitting him, screaming and asking why he did such awful things to her. Evan manages to calm her down just as his phone starts to go off. It's his wife calling in a video chat. The girl wants want to answer it with Evan's wiener out on camera. Evan begs him not to do it, because it could be his kids on the other end of the line, and promises to do whatever they want if they don't answer the call. They decide not to answer it, and Genesis instead starts to record them as Belle jumps on Evan. Okay, I say jump because we know Evan's not hard right now. So she's just pretending to ride him when really she's just sitting on a flaccid pee pee. Genesis leaves to get food and Evan pretends to be into it while wiggling his hand free from one of the restraints. The entire time, Belle's calling him daddy and howling and barking like a dog. Not to kink shame if anyone listening is into that, but god damn did I cringe when I was watching that. Evan breaks his hand free and pushes Belle off of him. She hits her head on the floor and whimpers while Evan unties himself. He does his pants up, sees Genesis eating his father's day cake, and runs at her. The idiot just watches as Evan goes to choke her again. He probably wouldn't have stopped this time either. She stabs the fork she was holding into the stitching from his surgery. Evan screams and drops to the floor as she pushes it deeper and, oh man, actually full on blacks out from the pain. Bell runs over and actually looks kind of worrying, not gonna lie. He wakes up tied to a chair as the girls pretend they're running a game show. They introduce Evan and are like, a father of two, possibly three, four, as they rub their tummies. Ugh, it makes me so uncomfortable. I hate baby and pregnancy stuff. And this is it. <laughs> They put his headphones on him, and whenever he talks in a way they don't like, they play static at top volume. Ellen's like, stop, stop, I'll go deaf, I'll go deaf, this is fucking serious, I could go deaf. And, I love you Keanu, but it comes across so stupid. Saying stop, or it hurts, would have been good enough. I can't tell how much of it is poor writing and how much is just bad acting or not caring because I know Keanu can act. I've seen him in shit like John Wick. But here, yeah. oh man. The girls start asking him questions related to pedophilia. Like how far away from a school do you have to be and stuff like that. Whenever he doesn't try to answer, or answers wrong, they blast his ears. I just want to point out here that headphones are really easy to shake off your head if you try. 
Some real good strong headbanging will knock those suckers right off. Short of them being duct taped into place, Evan could quite easily get rid of them. He never even tries though. Before they can finish asking their questions, Lewis is at the front door. They gag and cover Evan while sending a text to Lewis from Evan's phone. Genesis opens the door, pretending to be Evan's niece, while Belle hides Evan in one of the kids' rooms. Lewis is cool until he sees the fucked up sculpture. Genesis tries to play it off as Evan having messed it up. And like an actual kid, Belle is like, She said it wasn't us, when Lewis starts to yell a bit. Lewis uncovers the statue and freaks out even more as he takes a puff from his inhaler. God, I love Lewis so much. He knows these two did. He knows these two did it and says he's calling the police. Genesis tries to seduce him, saying it could be their little secret. And Lewis, my great sweet Lewis, is like, and I quote, Bitch, you're barking up the wrong fucking tree. I'm from Oakland, ho. I know two kiddo assholes when I see them. <laughs> I'm out here like, yes, boy, pop off. Tear into them. <laughs> While he's yelling, he hears banging from inside. He pushes past the girls and Genesis sneaks his inhaler out of his pocket as he goes by. Lewis finds Evan tied up and tries to help him. Our poor sweet boy has a real dumb dumb moment. But you know what we can do when a character's likeable? Forgive those dumb dumb moments. He hears the girls outside and freaks out, running out to try and save the art instead of untying Evan. He screams at the girls to stop as they're destroying the statue. His asthma kicks in and Genesis holds up his inhaler. They start to play piggy in the middle as Lewis stumbles between the girls trying to grab his inhaler. Honestly, Lewis should have just punched a bitch at this point. Even choking, he could knock one of these idiots out easy. While struggling, our poor man slips and hits his head on the corner of the concrete stand. Insta-death. These flippin' basic white bitches start laughing as Evan, who's managed to roll himself to the door, begs him to call an ambulance. Genesis, Genesis is like, it's a bit late for that. The girls start talking again and I'm just, shut up! Oh my god, you suck. Your voices are annoying. They push Evan against a wall. Genesis exclaiming that this is what happens when you break the rules. What rules? You're playing a one-sided game. People aren't turning up because Evan's been inviting them. They're turning up because it's their job. Please, just actually shut up. <laughs> the girls paper mache Lewis's body, while Evan, left alone, starts trying to knock a vase-type thing off of the shelf. The chicks text Evan from Lewis's phone, saying stuff like, What I did to Karen's statue is nothing compared to what I'll do to you if I ever see you again. How could you fuck my wife? And it hurts me, bro. I had to pause the film to read everything and make sense of it. Because despite them showing it to you, I missed it the first time. I can kinda low-key understand where it's meant to be coming from. They maybe want to throw the police off and get Evan into even more trouble. It's the only idea that makes sense to me. But, one, does Lewis even have a wife? It's never mentioned. He could be a single Pringle for all I know. Two, let's say that he did find out that there was a wife. Through his contacts. If so, his wife is going to report him missing pretty damn quickly. And she would have known that this is one of the places he'd be coming to. 3. Evan knows he's dead. And spoilers, 
They never plan on actually killing him. There's a literal witness. And four. His wife knows Lewis. He comes across as a respected family friend and employee. I would like to think she'd find it a little fishy that he destroyed an artwork he cared so much about at the start of the film. Also, this is a wealthy, upper-class, white people's home. You want me to believe these people don't have at least one video camera watching the place? What with all the priceless art and all the other expensive shit they have? Mate, this scene gave me a flippin' brain aneurysm. Oh man. Moving on. They put paper mache Lewis into the back of a van and talk about how much fun their friend's gonna have with this one and he can make anything disappear. They go back to their pretend TV show game and first time I watched this, I'd forgotten all about it to be honest. It wasn't until they re-asked one of the questions and I was like, Oh, right. We were doing this before Lewis came by. Evan gets pissed and starts yelling at them. He actually says some really good points about how he just wanted them to leave. And then some stuff that makes his good points hit a lot less hard. Honestly, his yelling has the same type of vibes as earlier, where it all just feels a little stupid and off. Also, I know I should be like, oh, he's a filthy cheater, so I don't care what happens to him. But the circumstances are massively different to other movies we've looked at. I'm still judging Evan, but there's a lot of other stuff we got to deal with right now. Besides, everything these chicks are doing and saying massively outweighs any annoyance I'd have with Evan at this point. Belle actually low-key sheds a tear in the background as Genesis just leans in and tells Evan he'll be executed at dawn. God, I want to punch her face so bad. They set an alarm and go outside to start digging his grave. Evan manages to get his iPad and get Suri to video call his wife. He covers it with his feet as the girls come in, but they hear it ringing. Genesis throws it outside and is like, you can't have an iPad, Evan. You might be trying to contact a child. And then makes fun of him by pretending to be a monster like he did at the start of the film. As Evan comes to the realization that they've been spying on him for a while before this. The girls take a shower and then destroy some of his wife's statues. They fuck up the cardboard models of houses that he has set up for his work, all while screeching and pretending to be like Godzilla. It's pretty cringy. They also mess up the kids room. I know you want to ruin Evan's life, but you seemed upset before when talking about how his family were victims and all this. Why fuck with the children stuff then? You're making them even more of a victim than if they found out he just cheated. While they're missing around, Evan goes back to trying to knock that phase down from the shelf. Cut to the girls giving him a haircut. Honestly, it would have been better if they had have just given him a full-on bowl cut instead of just cutting his fringe. The bowl's already on his head. Do the whole thing. I want to see our man with a bowl cut, let's go! Oh man, as the movie goes on, I grow to hate these chicks' voices and faces more and more. Shut the fuck up, oh my lord. They destroy Evan's vinyl collection, mess up the couch and his wife's painting with knives. They then start throwing shit around the room, accidentally knocking and breaking the vase that Evan's trying to be trying to knock down. It smashes to reveal a gun. Genesis is like, nice way to hide your gun from your kids, Evan. She tells Belle to untie him. Belle's hesitant, but Genesis insists. Evan asks her to point the gun away from him. She 
she mentions how if he had have gotten to it before them, they wouldn't be talking now. Like, no shit, Sherlock. Evan asks, wouldn't she do the same? And she's like, no, I'm not like you, Evan. I don't shoot people. But you know what? Not two seconds later, she says they should play hide and seek. If they don't find him before dawn, they leave. If they do find him, well, guess what, baby? Bang, fucking bang. She says three or four separate times that she'll shoot him. But no, I don't shoot people, Evan. Genesis, actually shut up. <laughs> you suck. Evan ain't allowed outside either, or else they'll shoot. They untie him and give him 30 seconds. Our man, at the very least, gets a knife and pot from the kitchen before hiding. He doesn't play it very smart, though. The girls go looking and can't find him. He tries to sneak out the front door and gets spotted. He trips over as he starts to bolt, dropping his knife. Genesis appears, gun pointed at him. Honestly, after hearing the girls move off into the house, he should have snuck out the slider door in the room that the girls started in, or snuck out one of the kids' bedroom windows. Front door is an amateur move, my dude. Anyway, Evan starts yelling and Genesis tells him he can be as loud as he wants because they checked every house and no one's home. It's a pretty lucky coincidence that every house in the neighborhood is empty and has stayed empty the whole time. The morning comes and they roll Evan into the grave they dug before filling it in. They leave his head above the earth though. He begs them to not kill him and they give him a lifeline, calling his wife so he can admit to everything he's done. The phone goes to voicemail and Evan screams for her to call 911. The chicks pretend to hang up before admitting that they actually hung up the moment it hit voicemail. But what if the wife had actually picked up? I guess they would have just hung up anyway, but it feels like another pretty lucky coincidence. The girls grab a large carved stone and pretend to bring it down onto Evan's head, actually hitting it into the dirt next to him, laughing and saying how that it's just a game how they can't believe he actually thought they were going to kill him. They say because he didn't say no, would have to go find someone else, and that people never say no. I'm sorry, what? Heaven was pretty clearly saying no at the start. You didn't listen to him. If you don't listen, when they simply say no, what do they have to do? physically fight you off and throw you outside? That's a lot more than a ding-dang no. What you did started off as low-key rape before becoming truly consensual. How many people just went catatonic and didn't do anything? That's full-on rape at that point. Don't be out here trying to argue with me either. If the, end if the genders were flipped, you'd be on my side. It goes both ways. Also, how many people have you done this to? You're telling me not a single one seriously fucked you up when you didn't listen to them and that no one's called the cops? The girls admit to being adults as they leave, but not before posting a video of Belle jumping on Evan to Facebook and placing the phone in front of Evan so he can watch. Thing is, Unless the video, before uploading it, got edited, anyone who watches it all the way through or catches the end will see Evan trying to escape. And I can guarantee that there's going to be at least one babe who'll see it to the end. Evan does manage to get one of his hands free and tries to delete the video, but accidentally ends up liking it instead. Also, you can see his friend's comments popping up, and one of them just says, UNFRIENDED, in all caps. I don't know why, but it made me laugh. 
the girls put a record on and leave with Monkey. They steal his dog. Yo, what the hell? That poor puppy. We get a long shot of how they messed up the house and end with the wife and kids coming home. They freeze in the doorway and the little boy's like, Daddy had a party. And that's it. That's the end. Oh, Lord. Okay, that's the film. Was it good? No. Was it well put together? Eh, questionable? Some of the acting in places sucked, but I can't tell how much of it stems from bad writing and just actual bad acting. The cinematography isn't anything special either. So what about the bare minimum? A film doesn't have to be good to be enjoyable. So was it? Hell no. <laughs> we have three main characters and two of them are annoying as hell. Me telling you them. Me telling you about them in this review doesn't really quite give off the vibe of what I was getting when I watched the movie. And I think to really understand, you'd have to watch the film. But I don't recommend it. Alright, anyway. I know that in some level, they're meant to be annoying. But to annoy your viewer to a point that they want to hurt the characters is never a good way to go. There's a fine line between... A character being annoying but likeable, and just straight up annoying. And if the character's life alone can make you want to slap a bitch, then you probably crossed that line. The motives also seem a little mixed up. They want to get a man to cheat, and then mess up his life because he cheated. Kind of like homewreckers. But they take it to a point where bare minimum communication would raise questions. Like there's a literal missing man whose blood I'm pretty sure you didn't clean up. Plus an utterly fucked house. With everything they did and left behind, it's all too easy for Keanu's character to simply explain everything that happened and have people believe him if given the chance to talk. Also, they seemed upset about the fact him cheating made his family victims, but proceed to steal Monkey and trash the house. I know they're meant to be crazy white girls, but they're poorly written. Commonly good, crazy characters have very clear intentions behind their actions. To them, it makes sense and it's only crazy to everyone else. Some good examples being Johnny from the Johnny the Homicidal Maniac series by Joan and Vasquez. The kid's insane and we're given some ideas and possibilities as to why. He's able to explain his actions thoroughly and they stay consistent throughout the comics. Despite it all, I don't ever remember him being hypocritical either. Or there's the babes who play Ghostface and Scream. Now, it's been a long time since I've watched that movie. But if memory serves me correctly, they killed people just to prove that they could. And it's not as easy to avoid as you'd think. It's a jab at horror movies and the culture around them. But the ideas are straightforward and never come across as annoying or particularly hypocritical. There's even some comical parts during the reveal. These chicks say that they're doing it because Evan's a filthy cheater, but their actions and some of the things they say don't line up properly. My point is, I don't like the characters. <laughs> they're annoying to a point that what would have been a fun, stupid film I just want to turn it off. So, what about the soundtrack? We bring it up every review. This one's mighty forgettable. I watched this film two days in a row, 
And when I reheard the original score, I was like, all right, yeah, that's here. They do have one or two songs that are actual songs from places, but I don't really count those as the soundtrack if the entire soundtrack isn't based around them. Kind of like how The Devil's Candy made its soundtrack really based around all of the different iconic songs. All in all, Knock Knock's really not worth your time. It's cringy and just overall annoying. The only upside is that the dog doesn't die, which is pretty rare. Well, thank you for tuning in everyone. This has been Blockbuster Backrooms. If you like this episode and would like to hear more, all episodes are up on mpr.nz forward slash show forward slash Blockbuster Backrooms. If you'd like to hit me with your thoughts or see some of the other stuff I do, you can find me across YouTube, Instagram and most other social media as shit I'm an artist. That's I-M-M-A, cause that's how I like to talk. I'll be back next week, same time, same place. Have a good night.